All right, so this video goes along with the text that you will see uh, in the section right above or below the video here. Um, <clears throat> so we laid out sort of the, the basic conditions of what we found for the cholesterol levels of the women at a large university. So I just wrote those down up here, but that's kind of your first step is to go through the problem, anything that's not labeled, figure out what it is. So we were told mu naught, meaning kind of the, the general population mean uh, was 168. So the good news is that we actually already have our null hypothesis. Remember the null says this is something that we're referencing either for the broader population, perhaps a previous value, you know, something that we, we have some evidence to believe this is the real value. So our null hypothesis is that mu naught equals 160, or sorry, that, that mu rather equals 168, which is right that basically that mu has not changed uh, from this value of the general population, right? And this, this mu that we're referring to uh, is for sedentary, folks who have a sedentary lifestyle. So we could say like mu s if it helps to kind of clarify that. Um, there isn't explicit wording in the problem about whether this is, um, you know, whether we think that that mu s is actually larger or smaller than this, we are told it's one-sided. So we kind of have to think about the scenario. Usually it's, it's a little bit more clear, but here uh, we're thinking, okay, if we were running this test, we would probably think that for sedentary folks, their average cholesterol is greater than for non-sedentary folks, is greater than 168, where right? high cholesterol is, is generally a bad thing. If you're sedentary, you're not moving around, probably your cholesterol goes up. Usually this is a little bit more clear, made clear in the problem, so you don't have to connect those dots. Um, if you do your own research though, this, right, this is something that you would have to think about. Um, we wanna make sure our conditions are met secondarily. Uh, so we wanna say, okay, well, did we have a random sample? Yes, so a uh, random sample, yes, is N at least 30. Yes, so our conditions are met, right? N was 71, so we're in good shape. Uh, the next question we wanna ask, we wanna find our test statistic. We wanna know, are we using Z or are we using T? Well, uh, we've seen this before in the course, and we said, well, Z, if I have sigma, the population uh, standard deviation, T, if I'm using S, the sample standard deviation. So, okay, I guess we're using Z. Um, we have, a formula for Z, right, we've, we've had actually several different formulas for Z depending on what our scenario is. Um, in the top, we always say, well, how far away is our estimate from the real values? So X bar is our estimate from, and when we say the real value, in this case, this is the assumed value. We assume the null is true. So X bar minus mu naught. And so if we're keeping track of this, right, we could say, well, X bar was 173.7 and mu naught was 168. So that's gonna be on the top. Now on the bottom, we usually divide by the, the standard deviation. So again, depending on what scenario we're in, one sample versus two, means versus proportion, that could look a little bit different. So in this case, we are uh, one sample that we're doing means, so it should just be the case that we're using uh, our old friend sigma over the square root of n. Now the good news is we have both of those things, so sigma 27 over the square root of n, which is 71. All right, so we can calculate that thing. What I, what I would say is just be careful about parentheses. So um, certainly in the numerator, uh, be careful about parentheses, it's, you know, if you're doing this, trying to do this all in one fell swoop in your calculator. And it wouldn't even hurt to put parentheses in the bottom if you were worried at all about how that was going to be calculated. So um, that's fine. I, I'm not terribly, at this, at this moment, I'm not terribly worried about what that number is. Um, if we were using a table, which is kind of the, the older method, you would need to find this and that will inform you of the p-value. You would look it up in a table. Now, generally what we're going to do is we're going to find the p-value and even really the, the z-score, um, our, our test statistic, z, 
We're going to find that using a function in our calculators. So there'll be a separate video uh, to kind of lead you through where do you find that. Um, but the p-value in this case, uh, we're again using one sample, uh, z, because we have sigma, and we're looking at this for means. So if you kind of punch through, you'll find that your, uh, if you go to stat, and then over to tests, um, the very first one is going to be a Z test. It's going to say Z test. And that's actually what we want, right? There are different tests on here. There will be a T test in case we choose T. There will be two sample tests in case we have two samples. But for right now, this is what we need. So if you run through and kind of input all of that initial information, including um, that we want to be bigger than, right? We want uh, mu s to be bigger than mu not bigger than 168, uh, then we're going to run through this and be able to come up with a p-value. Now, if we just do this, the, the p-value is going to be, uh, in this particular case, uh, it's going to be 0 0.0376. And we'll talk about the conclusion in a minute. Um, but the other piece of this is, hey, wait a minute, you know, what, what does this thing even look like? Right, what does it look like? Well, first of all, because we satisfied our conditions, we've got a normal curve, um, we are assuming that 168 is the true mean value. And we are asking ourselves, what is the probability of taking a sample and getting a mean of 173.7 or larger? Right. What's the, the probability of landing there? Again, we know that we're only looking at the one side because this is a one-sided test. We know that we're looking to the right because we're looking at having a value larger than mu naught. So we're finding this probability, and we find that that is right, 0 0.0376. Um, so that's something we've done many times before. Uh, using normal CDF. So nothing too crazy there. That's basically what the z-test is doing. It's kind of taking all of your inputs, running a normal CDF, right? Same sort of thing. Uh, what we want to know is, okay, our, our sample mean is almost never the same as what the true mean is. So that's not crazy that these numbers are different. What we want to know is, are they so different? Are, they, are, are the results rare enough? Is x bar far enough from mu naught that we think something fishy is going on, right? There's some reason to believe that, hey, actually this thing that I thought was true is not true, right? So we're looking for evidence to combat the null hypothesis. Um, so we have to ask ourselves, well, okay, is 0 0.0376 or 3.76%, is that a rare enough occurrence, right? Is having a sample mean like this a rare enough occurrence under our assumption to say our assumption must be wrong? Well, that depends on our alpha level. So at the beginning of the problem, we set up alpha equals 0 0.01. So we have to have results that only occur 1% of the time or less in order to be suspicious and think something, you know, something's wrong with my assumption. Well, our results, while they are rare, 3.76% of the time, uh, yeah, they're not quite rare enough for our cutoff. So since P is greater than alpha, right, so our P value is not rare enough, it's bigger than the, the cutoff that we set. Since P is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? We can add a little bit more context to that. We can say we can fail to reject the null hypothesis that the mean for sedentary folks is 168. Um, again, we can, we can give that a little bit more life, but our two options are do we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now keep in mind, fail to reject. We're always looking to prove this thing guilty. In court, they always say you are guilty or you are not guilty. What they don't say 
is you're innocent. So we never embrace the null hypothesis. Right? We just say we failed to reject it. We didn't find enough evidence to say that this was wrong. That's the general idea walking through a hypothesis test where we're using Z as our test statistic.